A days, it's like, um, we start off at 6, so I have to wake up at 6 in the morning and I have to get ready. And I leave the house like 7.15, I come here, and I have e first, which is like really boring in the morning. After then we have brunch, and then second, lunch, third. And then I don't have a seven, so I usually hang out with my friends, like we go get something to eat or something. B days, we usually have five to about six hours of like sitting down, just grinding through. Okay, the last two sectors are the government sector, as a teacher, you see your students three days a week, one day for a short amount of time, and then the two other days for like a double length, allowing them to go deeper. You can do a kind of a full lesson where you lecture and then have them do some processing and then, you know, come back and have closure rather than splitting it up over the course of a few different days. There's a huge difference in students' general liveliness and attitudes depending on the time of day. So we're six in the world if you take out, if you divide 14.2 trillion, by 350 million people, you get 47,000. Don't do that math, Zubin, because I don't know if it's accurate, but that's about what it is. I like first period. They're kind of they start off quiet and then they kind of warm up as the day goes, which I kind of like is that rhythm. Second period, like right now, 9.30 is probably the peak performance for students in terms of being alert and not being tired. Depending on their age after lunch can either be really rambunctious or not. Um, the end of the day is usually slow and they're usually tired. This is like your grandparents saying to you, in my day, you could go to the movies for only a nickel. Okay. In a traditional class, the teacher stands and talks and the kids sit. But a lot of us know that that's not good teaching. And so, like when I'm training teachers, we always talk about three 30-minute sections, and one of them should be something that's more active than sitting and listening. Show it to your team. Ready? DVDs, one, two, three. And there's a lot of research that shows that even kids just in their own seats, just standing up, sitting down, just that movement that's going to get blood flowing and brings more oxygen to the brain and just makes them more alert. Yeah, yeah it's more, it's, I get like, it's more awareness and I'm more like up rather than like, just like tired, like in the morning. Yeah. Teaching is, is, I wouldn't call it aerobic, but there's definitely a lot of movement involved. And if you're sick, like you get drained a 90 minute class, you're just drained at the end of it. The PE classes, there's a lot of kids that don't dress out it's called, which means they don't bring their PE clothes so they can't participate, so they sit on the side. And of course, the ones that do that are typically the ones that need to be exercising the most. I would just say having more rigorous PE classes where they're actually, you know, it's not just showing up and participating, but there's academics involved in it and higher standards in terms of what they need to be doing every day and learning and that kind of thing. It would start later because teenage brains are not awake at 7.30 and you know all of these studies have shown that it's hormonal and that they don't fall asleep till late at night and they don't shouldn't be waking up before 8 or 8.30 or something like that. And then I wouldn't change the structure, I would just train teachers to have more movement during the class period. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I've been run around because we do that every day here and <laughs> want to make sure you get enough exercise too.